to the cloud. So um, this is the second Esperanto class. Um, this is it's June 18th, 2020. And I'll turn it over to Ron Clausett. Well, thank you very much, Donna, for getting us all set up for both the first session and this second session. I think that the first thing I want to do is open it up to questions. Anybody that has any questions about anything. Um, I have my own things I want to get into, but I think the first question is, do you have anything you would like to ask me? Oh, it looks like oh. I've got a couple of questions. Yeah. You, so I'll take I'll take a stack. Leo Sandy. Okay. I just and want then to, David Gallup. Before we start, I just want to introduce this this new book. It's on uh, it's it's called the uh, Growing Up Global. If you know anyone who's raising children, it's full of uh, all kinds of uh, ways to uh, get kids to be global, have a global perspective. It's got a foreword by uh, Jane Goodall, uh, so that you can't beat that. Oh. Cool. Uh, Thank you. That's great. Pardon me? How does one get it? Uh, it's uh, just just Google uh, Growing Up Global and it's, okay. the, the author's name is uh, Homa Sabet Tavinger. Okay. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, David Gallup, you had your hand up too. Yeah, it's actually a, a, a pronunciation question. Good. Uh, so the uh, the A, um, and I see on the pronunciation guide, it's like a fa, ah. Fa, ah. Like ah. Fa. It's, so, it's always ah. It's, it's never ah. anything else. It's always ah. ah. It's always ah. So, ah. so a word, so when we see the A sound, like just, well, we'll ah. probably go through your pronunciation test, but it was just like, so K-A-T, would that be cot? Ot? Exactly right. That's a very good thing. Okay. And okay. that would also be the case for number 10. I wrote rots. Yes, R-O-T-S. Okay, so the A, a is ah, is, is, is ah. Okay, that was really, my, I just was trying to get it through my head. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, in English, when you say short A, sometimes it means ah, like in cat. But in Esperanto, that's never the case. In Esperanto, it's always ah. like the A in ah. father. <laughs> Thank you. Unless, unless it is in a diphthong. Well, right. If it's in it, if it's with a diphthong, if it's got another of that, that the U after it or some well, other diphthong, even, even right? Then, Donna, even then it's still ah, ow, for ow, 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 ow. ow. So I. And, in in it's in in English, all of the long vowels except e are really diphthongs. So when you say a, i, o, u, they're all diphthongs. Mm, okay. So. So already we all have right. a couple questions about these words in the list, and that's in fact what I wanted to do. At the very beginning, oh, I see another question here from Rob. Yeah, Bob. Yes, Bob, do you I have, have a question? question? Just a more of a curiosity question, because Jane was saying last class that there were some Russian elements in Esperanto originally, and so that uh, letter, so would that be a Russian like Tsar? We always don't know how to spell yeah, Dar if it should be a C or a T. Jane is Russian, so she knows. <laughs> yes, so it's not just Russian, it's a lot of Eastern European languages have a lot of, have these sounds, like, a lot, like, t, ch, um, sh, like, we, we use them a lot, and they made their way into Esperanto. Um, so if you see the TS in my last name, Shevtsov, that's actually the T in Russian or the C in Esperanto. That's precisely that. That's what the, the TS in my name actually is. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Cool. Uh, also, we should note that when Esperanto, when Zamenhof published his first book introducing the language to the world, he had to use an existing language. 
And what existing language did he use? Russian. That was the mm -hmm. language in which the first Esperanto book was published. And it got it translated into German and French and eventually English. But um, the very original version was in Russian. Um, I hear an echo with Ron. Oh, do I have something to set up wrong? <laughs> No, but maybe if everybody would mute their phone, let's, if everybody mutes, let's see if the echo goes away. Well, I'm going to speak. Does, uh, is the echo still there? Good. Okay. Well, it looks like Dave Orton had something to say. No. Okay. I do want, while we're talking about the relation between Esperanto and other languages, one thing I don't want to neglect that, that I've already forgotten to mention, and that is when Zamenhof was inventing Esperanto, he knew that he had to avoid certain things that would be difficult for many people. And one of the things in English that is extremely difficult and not in most languages is the TH sound, which is in, in, in English, we have it all the time. Uh, like in, in the words the, in the word theory, in the word theme. And so what he did was design a language that has no TH sound. What that means is every time there's a word that might be looking like English, you have to figure out what would the TH get changed to? Well, it usually get change, gets changed to a T or a D. A good example of this would be the English word thick. How would you transform thick into Esperanto? You want to get rid of the TH, so what are you going to do? You put a D at the beginning. So you would spell it D-I-K, Dika would be thick or dense. So, and that's just one example. You could run through the whole Esperanto vocabulary and find that there are many, many words that are not that different from English, except you got to get rid of the TH sound. <laughs> and then that like, theme would become Tamil. <laughs> you just have to get rid of that H after the T. Okay, let's get back to our Esperanto pronunciation um, test. Ron, I have a question. Sure. Can you explain how the, the you said Dika, how, where did the ah come from on Dika, <laughs> from thick? Good. I mean, Good question. And the answer is, that's the ad adjective ending. Adjectives always end in ah. So, and it would be true even if you put a mile, say you wanted to say thin, which also has that TH sound. How would you say thin? If thick is dika, thin is maldika, <laughs> the opposite of thin. But in Esperanto, every noun ends in O. And for we English speaking people, what we have to be careful of is not to say, oh, that, you got to eliminate that U. So it's just, oh, without going to a U. But that's for all nouns. So even the word Esperanto. <laughs> Do you all realize the word Esperanto is itself an Esperanto word? It comes from the root for the verb hoping, I hope, me esperas. And then you got that ending, A-N-T-O in English, anto, which means a person who does that. So esperanto is a person who hopes, a hoper. And that was a pseudonym that Zamenhof wanted to use. He did not want to use his own name. 
as the author of the language, partly because he knew his dad thought it was a ridiculous idea, but also because he himself was just becoming a physician. And he would think, he thought, oh goodness, I don't want to use my own name because then there will be at least a couple of people who might think I'm an oddball that I'm come up with this language idea. So he decided he would use the pseudonym Dr. Esperanto, Dr. Hopper. And so at first the language was called the language of Dr. Esperanto, and then it just got shortened to the language of Esperanto, and then it just got shortened to Esperanto as a proper noun. Um. Ron, do you want to go through the part, just the, the all um all four of the part of speech endings? Well, yes, I guess we could say that go through the part of speech e. So, Felicia would be happy. Felicia happily. Rapida would be fast, rapida, rapidly. And of course, you need to remember, you can always use that prefix mal. So if you want to say slowly, it would be mal rapida. Now Jane, did you have to, something more to, I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you. Uh, no, I think, yeah, I think what you're doing is what I was asking about. Okay, now let's get back to these, this list of words that we've talked about. We've already talked about some of them. How about number, 11, number 18? Anybody want to come up with what is number 18 in English? Mike. 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 Right, which is of course short for microphone. <laughs> and what? What's the next one in the, the words that the letters are in English, D-A-C, how would you pronounce that in Esperanto? Dots. 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 D-O-T-S. The next one, number 20, R-E-J-S, how does that get pronounced? What's the English word? I guess raise. Raise. Well, raise. S is race. So race. Now, uh, if the la number twenty-one. Oh, race. Number twenty-one is raise. raise. And that ah. is an interesting idea. That's a problem even in English. How do you spell the English? Raise. It can be R A Y S, but it can also be R A I S E the verb, to raise. So that's just one of the many problems for people who have to learn English as a second language. It's just got to be very confusing. You've got the same word that can be spelled two ways and has two very different meanings. And see, I also did want to mention when I was talking at the very beginning about the relation between the written language and the oral language and how they're really two different languages. And I think I even mentioned this sentence that we what? didn't get to, to but follow. But can we way. finish, but I'm, can we finish the pronunciation? I mean, yeah, I think that okay. would help me. If Which we could one would you finish. like to look at? Well, I want to look at all of them. All <laughs> we of can them. keep going, we're at 22, yeah. Okay, let's go <laughs> with them in order, starting with 22. I mean, is that okay to others? Did, or is I'm nobody else? Oh, you. if they're nodding their heads, okay. Yeah, I think there's not too much of a difficulty with the others. So let's go right on here. Mm. 22 would be? Breeze. 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 Okay, number. Number 23 is interesting because it's an English word that even native English speakers may not be familiar with. Flesh. Flay. F L. A Y, which means to strip Play. or lash. Oh, According good. That's what I put. I didn't know myself. <laughs> Play, what does that mean? I just figured that's what it's got to say, play. But that's what it 
in English, F-L-A-Y. Why? Okay, number 24. Core. Core. Core, that's an easy one. Number 25. Mouse. Mouse, <laughs> M-O-U-S-E. Number 26. Lot. Lot, L-O-T. Number 27 is a little tricky. Edge. Edge. And how do you spell it in English? E D G E. It's got a D in there that's completely silent. Edge. Number 28. Reach. Reach. And how would you make it an adjective? A rich person. Rich I homo, rich a homo would be a rich person. And how would you say a poor person? Mal richulo. Mal richulo would be a poor person. Number 29. Toss. What's the English? Toss. Toss, T-O-S-S. -S. How about number 30? Moose. Moose, which would be spelled M-O-O-S-E. How about number 31? Rouge. Rouge, and how do you spell it in English? R-O-U-G-E. Yeah, R-O-U-G-E. Something that's got to be puzzling for people learning English as a second language. Okay, what's number 32? Cough. 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 <laughs> Even more mysterious. How do you spell it in English? C-O-U-G-H. Right. So this exercise shows you how some English words are going to be difficult for foreigners. Okay, number 33. Yet. Yet. And number 34. Dodge. 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 And how would you Dodge. spell that in English? D-O-D-G-E. Yes, D-O-D-G-E. Again, a silent G in there. But okay, so that would be it. Now, Anyone have any other questions about this Esperanto pronunciation test? Okay, David. Oh, Dave. David You're Gallup. on mute, Dave. You're on mute, David. Yeah. Dave Gell. Yeah, you're in. Okay. There's, there's both of us. Dave, Dave Otten, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, first of all, Ron, we don't see your picture. Oh, I don't oh, see it on. What, why? Yeah. It hey. was there originally. Yeah, yeah. You must have turned. Your video must be off. There you go. Okay. I was down there You're before. Back. I don't know how I lost it. Ron, okay. what's the difference again between 20 and 21? Uh, would R E J S be R A Y S in English? Rays, like the rays of a sun? No, because rays has a Z sound at the end. So it would be R A C E. Number one would be R A C E, race. And 21 would be rays. R A Y S or R A I S E. Okay. Okay, now David Gell. So are there any homonyms in Esperanto at all? I think there are a couple, but I couldn't come up with them right off the bat. Okay. But um, one of the features of Esperanto is the lack of homonyms. And, um, and so, you know, it's very unusual when you do find them, but it seems to me that somewhere, I can't come up with it right at the moment, but okay. somewhere I've seen one. Okay. Jane, can you remember? Are there any Esperanto? No, words? I think you're supposed to, like, 
I think it like was a homonym with another word that's not supposed to be used. But I can't think of any off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> Donna. So do these, the words on the pronunciation test are some of these are really Esperanto words. Are they all Esperanto words? And what do they mean? Or they're not? They're just letters put together. Well, they're just when letters said, to help you practice said, pronunciation. But you, except you said, re, but, re, oh, I thought you said reach was rich. I mean, well, rich. That, that, <laughs> Number, that 28. Number 28. That, that is true. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. Uh, reach, reach uh, would be a rich and would be an adjective. Richulo would be a rich person. But yes, you're right. Rich would be an Esperanto word. But that's the only one. Okay. Yes. Well, I think there are some other examples of you've got some words here that when you pronounce them in Esperanto, they come out to be English words like number 16. J E L becomes yell. Yeah. And another example, I guess an even better example is yes. <laughs> the word yes is exactly the same pronunciation wise in English and Esperanto. It's just spelled differently. In English, it's spelled uh -huh. Y-E-S. In Esperanto, it's spelled J-E-S. I've also chu and shin. Yeah. Do you mean number 12 too? Shin are both number, ones. number 12. Number 12. Number 12. Number 12, yeah. number 12 is chu, but that is an Esperanto word, which is the word that is used in Esperanto when you want to indicate that you're going to ask a question. Chu v s s richulo. Are you a rich person? Chu v estes esperantisto. Are you an esperantist? So chu is a very important word in Esperanto that doesn't get translated. It's just an indicator that it's a question. But it is written in the written language. <laughs> it's not in, in the oral language, of course, but in the written language, the chu would be there. Oh, okay, Dave Owens. Dave, we don't hear you. You're on mute. You're on mute. Did you go through one through 19? Well, no, we, he we, went. We can do no, that. No, we went from, yeah, we, we went through one through four, I think. Yes, we did go uh, yes, one last through week. four before. So, okay, if you want to go through them, oh, I think that might be worthwhile. Number five. Play. We did that. Anyone? Why? And how do you spell it in English? F L Y. Right. F L Y would be number five. Why? Number six. Tune. Tune. Okay. English spelling. Would be two spellings: T O O N for cartoon, or T U N E for for songs. Okay. Oh. Okay, number seven. Cot. Cot. Not cat, but cot, because that A is ah. Number six. Oh, so in, uh, so in, in New England terms, it would be C-A-R-T for cot. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, you got, the, 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 the letter I is a really difficult one to deal with because it is pronounced E in Esperanto. So any word that begins with an I in English, we're likely to say in, but it should be in, like the word for a child, infano, not infant, like we would say in English, infant, but in, infano, industrial, 
So if you got to remember, especially when that I is the very first letter in the Esperanto word, it gets pronounced like a double E. Okay, number eight. How? How, which is spelled how in English? H O W. Good. Okay, number nine. Green. Green, spelled G R E E N. Number 10. Rocks. Rocks. Rocks, which is spelled R O R O T S. R O T S. Okay. Number 11. That sounds funny. It's not, it, it, it's, it's, it's rocks. I'm, you, I'm hearing rocks, and I'm, but it's supposed to be rots. R O T S, rots. Rots. The C is T S. Rots. It sounds like A W. Not, not raw, raw. Rots. Ah. But what rots. is rots? I never heard of that. The wood rot. I wood think rot. it really depends. The, 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 um, the, I the, think it really depends the, on um, where you are, because the vowels do get pronounced a little differently in different parts of the U.S. Yes. So yes. in some places they really blend the R and the O, which is what some of these. Um, use and other places tend to keep them more distinct. Like like rot and Boston is the same. Pardon? Rot and Boston are both the same. Yes. yes. And Jane, when you said this, it reminds me of something I probably shouldn't even talk about, but when I went to Russia in 1988, the people who translated from Russian to English love to have me speak because I speak slowly and I have, they must have learned from a Midwesterner how to pronounce English. But they said, we just love to translate when you speak because of the way you speak. You speak slowly and clearly and we are used to that pronunciation. <laughs> so they learn from a mis Midwesterner. And I guess even... Yes, from, um, if you look at the media, Midwestern and California accents, which are about the same, are usually taken as standard. Yes. So they and, probably did learn from a Midwesterner or a Californian, and we sound pretty much the same. <laughs> and one one of the places, of course, that really confuses people that are not native English speaking speakers is New England, especially Boston, where they have their own unique ways of pronouncing English. I thought we had the I thought we had the correct way. <laughs> well, that's what everybody thinks. <laughs> also, the South that also confuses people. <laughs> okay, I think we're on our list of words ready to go with number 13. 11. Uh, 11, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, right. 11. So what is 11? Yule. 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 Yule, which how do you spell it in English? W-O-U apostrophe L-L. Hmm. Yeah. Or Y-U-L-E. Y-U-L-E. <laughs> Or I guess you could even say Y O U apostrophe L L, right? You'll you'll do yeah. that tomorrow. You will. Yeah. 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 Okay. Num number twelve. Chew. Chew. Chew, which is spelled how? C H E W. A C H O W, right? Number 13. Shoot. 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 Spelled S H O O T. Right. Okay. Number 14. Mesh. Mesh. Spelled M E S H. Number 15. Yes. Joy. 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 Spelled J O Y. J O Y. Number 16. Yell. 
Yeah. Yell. Yell spelled how? Y E L L. Right. Two L's. Okay. Number 17 is a good one. Chop. Chop spelled C H O P. Good. I think now we're, we've already talked about 18, 19, and 20. Yeah, we did. Them. We've done the rest. We've done them all now. Done them all. Okay. Yep. Uh, then that allows me to, okay, Dave. I might mention to those of you who are unfamiliar with it, if you get to a point of typing Esperanto and you need the special symbols of the circumflex, the hat above, on most computers, you can go to the symbols and there'll be those Esperanto letters. And if you can't, that's also important that you need to recognize when Zamenhof first invented the language, people used typewriters. And the question was, how are we going to type those Esperanto letters? His first suggestion was, maybe you can just use the letter H after any letter that has the circumscribed, has the um, circumflex over it. So that CH would be the way that uh, C with a circumflex over it would, would be spelled. And that works nicely for C and S, but it doesn't work at all for the other letters. <laughs> uh, especially it doesn't work well for H. So a newer thing now with computers is to use the letter X. There's no X in the Esperanto alphabet. So if you have a computer and you can't figure out how to do the Esperanto letters. Dave said you, you can do it. I'm not sure everybody knows how to do it though. Dave, you wanna say a word? How do you do it? Um, you just go up above in uh, Word and it says symbols and you just click on symbols and it gives you options. Oh, okay. So it's within Word that you do it. But um, it's also possible to have multiple keyboard layouts. Um, every operating system does this differently, but it's always, which would always be possible. Like I, I do sometimes switch to an Esperanto layout. You just have to remember where the new letters are. Well, those, those who are technologically capable there is a regular setup, a regular program that you can insert into your computer. Somebody else did it for me. So that's how my computer just makes the Esperanto letters. And I've never learned how else to do it since somebody did it for me. But in what you were talking about, if you use just a regular keyboard, it would be SX or CX. Exactly right. Or JX. Yes. Yeah, you would just put an X, the letter X after the letter that should have had the superscript. And that would also even be for you with a brev. But nowadays, I don't think the letter X is getting used much anymore because people have the capability of making the S model letters. Okay, I did want to go back to a statement that I had made earlier when I was talking about English and the written and oral languages. I wanted to give you a sentence. L listen to this sentence and tell me how many words it is. Think about it in terms of how many written words in the written language and how many spoken words in the spoken language. Do you two want to go to? Do you two want to go to? How many spoken words are there? Seven. Seven. Seven spoken words. How many written words are there? Seven. Well, there's there's seven. So. The, in the oral language, how many words are there? Which one is it? Seven? Yeah, there's only five. Five. In, in the spoken language, because you say two, two, and two, it's, it sounds like the same word. 
that we're native speakers of English, so we don't even notice it. But think about it. Do you too want to go to? So do you too is T W O want to go T O go to is T O O. So you got three different spellings of that same oral sound to. And that was the point of my example that in written language, you see that you have different words, but in the spoken language, there's no difference in the pronunciation. Another thing I wanted to mention, you will notice that when you get to your endings, there is a suffix I-N-O in Esperanto, Eno, which you use for the female form. So patro is father and patrino is mother. Frato is brother and fratino is sister. Filo is son, filino is daughter. Now, there are some feminists who say, oh, come on, what's wrong here? That you got an ending for female, but you don't have an ending for male. <laughs> and there've been a lot of discussions about this, but the, the situation is that English can be a guide for you here because we have somewhat the same situation in English where sometimes if you want to emphasize femaleness, you don't, you, you can, but you don't have to. So example, how about poet? Poet could either be male or female. If you want to emphasize female, poetess. Okay, now that's exactly how you do it in Esma. If you want to emphasize the femaleness, then you put the eno on, but you don't have to put the eno on. Another example was actor and actress in English. Well, in Esperanto, you don't need to make a distinction, but if you want to, you can. Professoro is either male or female, but Professorino, if you want to emphasize it's a woman, then that's the way you do it. And also, Edso is the word for husband. So how will you say wife? Edzino. That E-D-Z is the root. If it's just got an O on the end, it means husband. If it has, in English, I-N-O, in Esperanto, Eno then it means wife. Okay, now I do want to get to the numbers, the numeroi. I hope you've had a chance to look at them, but we want to spend a moment talking about them. They are actually very much from Latin. <clears throat> Uno, do, three would be one, two, three. Now, it's when you get to four and five that you got to make a variety from what you would have in Latin. In Latin, you would have Q-U-A-R, clar, and then Q-U-I-N, queen. But you can't do that in Esperanto because the U will indicate a separate syllable. It's a vowel, and as soon as you have a vowel, that would make uh, make it into a two-syllable word. You would have U and A or U and I. So if you got to change it. And the way that Zamenhof decided to change it was instead of Q-U, you have K-V. So Klar for four and Queen for five. And then going on from there, Ses, Sep, Ok, Now, deck. Now here is where Esmeralda has a huge advantage from English. What do you do in English? Oh, 11, 12, 13. Well, in Esmeralda, all you have to do is 10 plus one. Deck uno. Deck do. Deck tree. Deck var. Deck fiend. Deck ses. Deck sep. Deck oak. Deck now. And 20. Do that two times 10. So in order to get the, the 
decades. You put the number in front of deck. So do deck is 20, tree deck is 30, clar deck is 40, tween deck is 50, ses deck is 60, sept deck is 70. So how will you say 73? 73. Sept tree. Sept tree. How will you say 85? Octet queen. Spawning. That means good. Octet queen is 85. How about 99? Now deck now. Now deck now. Now we do need another word when we get to 100, but we just go to, English, to Latin again. And cent, C-E-N-T, but remember that C is pronounced like a T-S, cent. So cent. Cent. Cent uno, cent du, cent tri, cent quar, cent fin, cent ses. And I recommend, in fact, what I did myself, I would count when I would doing my exercises. And that way, after you do your exercises over and over again, you can count in Esperanto. Uno, do, three, clar, clean, ses, sep, oh, now, deck, deck, uno, deck, do, deck, three, deck, clar, deck, clean, deck, sep, deck, sep, deck, oh, deck, now, do, deck. Now, after you get to a thousand, uh, it, it's a little more complicated, but it's still uh, do, middle, middle is a thousand, do, middle, three, middle, clar, middle, clean, middle, Ses meal, sep meal, oak meal, now meal, deck meal. And then you go 11,000, 12,000, 100,000, and so on. So in Esperanto, it's extremely easy to count up to 100. And it's not all that difficult to go beyond there. So, chu vi havas demandoin. Do you have questions? Notice I use chu. Chu, chu, vi havas demandoin. If I hadn't used chu, if I just say vi havas demandoin, it would be you have questions. But chu, vi havas demandoin is do you have questions? Chu, vi havas demandoin, uh, David Gell. So can you use voice inflection in Esperanto to ask the question? And well, when you're talking you. with someone, yes. But when you're communicating by writing, you have to use something else. That's why you have to have the chew. Because when in the written language, you cannot rely on the inflection. The oral language, you can. But the written language, you have to have a different thing. And, and that's why the chew is there. Is, so is, so you would use the chew even in oral language. Is chew used for every single question or is there another format? For oh, no, chew is only for yes or no question. Oh, okay. Okay. Otherwise, you've got the K words, which we will be getting to eventually, but you have the K words for where, kie, K I E, uh, kiam, when, K I A M, kiu, K I U, who, so we have those. In fact, that might be a good introduction. Uh, we're very glad that um, in our class we have Chuck Mays. And Chuck is also an Esperanto, which means that we can engage in a little bit of an Esperanto conversation that you can listen to. And we'll make it as simple as we can by making it just a few questions and he will respond in Esperanto, and I will ask him the questions in Esperanto. But I will insert from time to time some commentary. Yo, Charo, Chuck. Kio vi estes, kio estes via nomo? Oh, Duncan Ron. Mia nomo estas Chuck Mays. Bonnie. You probably understood that. Yes. Chu V estas usonano. Yes, mi estas usonano. Now, there's something we need to talk about a little bit. 
if we were just using English, I would have to say, are you an American? Which is just a very idiotic sort of thing because there are people in South America, Central America, other people in North America, Canadians, that are not technically people who live in the United States, but they are technically Americans. So we've got a problem in English. How do you say I am an, I am, uh, an American without being <laughs> out of line with regard to a lot of other people? But in Esperanto, we don't have that trouble because we have a separate Esperanto word for United States of North America, USONO. U-S-O-N-O. -O. USONO is the name for the United States of America. And then that A-N ending is to be a member of. Just like in English, we have Canadian, Australian. We're used to that A-N ending and you use it in Esperanto too, except it works with the United States, <laughs> unlike English, where we have a difficult situation in English. So, mi estas usonano. Yes, so, then the tria demando. Notice when I wanted to say the three, the third question, I had to put an A on the end of tree, because now it's become an adjective. The third question, la tria, Demando. So, the tria demando. In Kiu Urbo V Logis, Chuck. Yes, mi, lor, mi Logis in la Urbo de Raleigh, in la Stato de Norda Carolino. Bone. Regardu lavor, pay attention to the words Urbo for city, Stato for state. Kiu Esas Lavorto por la country, or la Lando, Kio estas via Lando. Mia Lando estas usono. Bone. Nun la quara demando. Kioma horo nun estas tia in via urbo? Tia la horo estas la cavara kai dek oak. Bone. So, Kiam only uses, when, when you use the expression kioma horo, that's how you ask what time is it. Now, kiom just means what quantity. The A on the ending indicates that I want the, the number in ordinal form rather than in the basic form. So, in kioma horo, the third hour, or the fourth hour, the tria hour, or the dua hour. Numero queen. Kiom da homoi esses in via mamalio. Estas sep homoi in via mamalio. Yes, mia edzino. Tri Gay fratoi, gay filoi, kai du gay nepoi. Bone. No, I don't know whether everybody is aware of that prefix, ge, but you notice he used it in order to explain either male or female. Ge is a prefix, means male or female or both. So homo is a human being, gay homoi would be men and women, or ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gay homoi. Yes, Ron, you might want to explain the difference between ge and gay. It's very subtle. Via uh, Vito, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you do the diphthong gay, it means gay. Uh, but ge is the two sexes combined. So yeah. it can be very easy to mix those up if you're not yeah. careful. Yeah, so gay as a diphthongo. Yeah. Gay said ge as a unusilabo. So, Duncan. Do, 
nun to esses demandoi. We have a chanson ausculti al conversatio. Uh, you're speaking and, Esperanto, Ron. I think to your to your students, and they don't understand. Well, I am using Esperanto because I'm on them, them to get used to it. To right. be complainants mean? Do you understand me? Uh, I am now asking the question. To be harvest demandoin. Do you have questions? Now you don't have to answer in this one. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we're that far along yet. Well, no questions? Everybody well, I I didn't understand the last thing he I thought thought I was following pretty well with North Carolina and <laughs> I yeah. was, but then but, whatever that thing was at the end, I didn't really get it. Were well, you talking about your your children? Your yeah. your so I said uh, <laughs> so I said Edzino, which is wife, and I said three children and two grandchildren. Mm. Ah, what's the word for grandchildren? Nepo, our gay nepo. Well, yeah, if it's a male grandchild, it's Nepo. If it's a female, Nepino, but we have one of each. So I said, Ge Nepoi. Ah. Oh, now, is that clear for you, Donna? Yeah, Again, thank you. And, and then the other thing we were talking about, we, we do have this English word for gay people, gay, and that gets Converted over into S model as a. Got it. Is it spelled G E J? The open ears, yes, I think yes. Yep, it is. So what's the word for happy? Felicia. Me oh, okay. me S is Felicia. I'm happy. Me S is Mal Felicia. <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm sad. To Estes Aliai Demandoi. Are there other questions? I do have one more thing I want to do before we close up today, and that is to say a word about next time. Because next time we are going to be trying to sing a song in Esperanto. And I thought this would be a good way to get a little pronunciation practice. Now, it is uh, the, the melody, melodio, the melody is Friar Jaca, Brother John. But let me try here, I'm not a great singer, but let me try just to introduce you to the first verse. Ruja Pomo, Ruja Pomo, Estas G, Estas G, Pomo es es fructo, Pomo es es fructo, fructo, yes. Fructo, yes. Now, some people in Esperanto even refer to the song as Ruja Pomo. And in fact, it was at the beginning, a fellow in Norway came up with this, and it was only three verses one, one for Ruja Pomo and one for Blue a Tablo. He had children and had a blue table. <laughs> but and I thought, well, why not use it for all the colors? So that's what I did. I worked this out. And then as Donna explained in her message, this was something I made good use of when I went to China. Because I was, I had the task of teaching in a grade school class of children. But I don't know Chinese. So how do I teach Esperanto? And so I had pictures of these objects. You, and, uh, you, you did get a place where you can go and see that. But I had a book with these pictures of different things. I would just hold up the book and turn the pages, Ruja Pomo, Flava. And also for the order of the colors, it's the Canto de la Coloroi, Song of the Colors. And there's a logic to the order in which the colors occur. It's red, yellow, green, and blue, which is the colors of the rainbow in order. And then the next four verses are the neutral colors, black, white, brown, and gray. 
And then the next two are ordinary colors that were not included in the primary colors, uh, orange and purple. And then the next two are the metallic colors, uh, silver and gold. And then the final verse is probably the most important one composed by Charlotte Kors, who was the originator of the organization in Fanoi Cerca Le Mondo, children around the world. And she carried on communication by mail with Esperantists all over the world. But then she was no longer, eventually no longer able to do that. And uh, eventually I decided I had to do it to keep that organization going. And so that organization still exists and we still have a website. It was probably gonna go out of business in another year or two because <laughs> I'm no longer able to do these things and especially no longer able to travel. So um, anyway, that's the song that I use. And I think it's very good, not only to get the pronunciation, but also to learn the names of the colors and also to learn about some other objects. So the open is, I am of the opinion, I think that we are at the end of the class, Junette. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Donna and Nun S is via Vito. Your that that's an important thing. Via Vito, your turn. My turn. Oh, well, I'm thank you everyone for coming. I'm sorry I'm not speaking Esperanto to you. <laughs> I'll have to work on that. But um we'll be together uh next time, same time, same Zoom in a yeah. week. We're ready to sing with your singing voices. So yeah. exactly right. Um, Dave Otten has a question. Well, I would highly recommend everyone who's just starting out to go over these charts over and over and over again. They pack in so much information and they show, especially on the third page, how you can learn hundreds and hundreds of words just through prefixes, roots, and suffixes. So I think these are really good. Yes, no, Don Cohen, I totally agree with that. And that's why I started the course off with those four charts. They are the basis of everything. And if you really study and learn those four, tape, those four charts, you will have a very good beginning knowledge of Esperanto. Now there's still vocabulary to learn, but it's a very good start. All right, you that sounds great. I will. I'll stop the recording now. I think we're done. I'll make sure I stop the recording.